And so some of the people I know are hurt. I've seen them posting that they're kind of sad that we're not together in service. But thank God that your hope is in Christ Jesus alone. That these four walls are just a building. Real ministry goes out there. And whenever we get together as a body of Christ, we are going to have a time of fellowship. And just a few announcements. As you know that we're not physically having service together, but remember to tune in every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Midweek service on Wednesday night at 6.30. So be sure to tune in on Facebook and YouTube and join in together. Don't just go away by the wayside. Don't get so isolated. I know they're talking about social distancing and just getting no being away. But never distance yourself from being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So be sure to tune in anytime there's services that are happening. Be sure to check out the Facebook page to be a part of what is going on because we are the body of Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ and the body of Christ will be together as family. And so that's all the way of announcements and as a means of offerings, we have a way to give. You can always mail in your offerings to the church office. The address is 14205 East 12 Mile in Warren, Michigan, 48088. Again, if you want to mail in your tithes and your offering, please mail that to 14205 East 12 Mile in Warren, Michigan. Also, text giving is available. So if you would like to text by give, doing that, text the word give, G I V S victory, E to 248 368 0310. Again, if you want to do text giving by your phone, text the word give to 248 368 0310. And if you have your offerings in your home, we're going to pray together. Amen. We're going to pray together because God loves a cheerful giver. And so we're going to sow cheerfully into our, we're going to show our seed, and we're going to sow it cheerfully for how the Lord has blessed us. So if you have your seed in your hand or if you have your phone, raise it up, and we're going to pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the time. And we thank you for the offering. So, Lord, I ask that you will bless the gift and the giver. Lord, that you will multiply it a hundredfold. And, Lord, we say thank you that you've given us this seed to sow, God. And, God, we cherish this seed, but we release this seed unto your word, God. And that you will give it increase and that you will make it grow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is good. Normally, around this time, we have our time to greet and fellowship. So the way we're going to do that is just let people know that you're tuning in. Let us know where you're watching from. Praise the Lord. So we have a saying around here that we love guests. And if you're looking for a church, quit looking because we would love to have you here. And also, if there are any prayer needs going on that you're like, that if you need something or you need someone to touch and agree with you on prayer, please drop that in the comments Send us a message on our Facebook page. Email the church. Get that message to us because we want to partner together with you and pray together. Amen. Because we know we believe in the power of prayer. We know that our God is still healing. He is still saving and he is still delivering. So whatever your need may be on today, let us know because again, as family, as a family of God, we come together for family. And maybe you've been shouldering this by yourself too long. And now God is saying you need to release that need to your family. Let your family know because we as a body are going to corporately pray with you for those needs. Because we know prayer works. Amen. God has still saves. We are testimonies. Amen. And if you don't believe that if you are saved, you are a testimony. And you've got a word in your belly to share with someone. But again, this morning we're going to be reading from Luke, Luke 19, where is where we're going to be reading from. We're going to be starting in a moment to, and verse number 28. Amen. 
Like we said, we may not be physically together, but we are together as a family. And I'm so excited that we are able to have this means, this tool, to be able to connect and to share the gospel with you wherever you may be at. So don't be discouraged as to where we may be at at this present moment. We are still able to have a service. And for that, give testimony to God that we are able to share the gospel message across this region, across this land. And so we want you to take the time to remember to connect with one another. We've been saying that with each broadcast because it's so easy that when you get used to being by yourself, you get used to being by yourself. But don't let that come to a point. Reach out to one another. Share with one another. Encourage one another. Now more than ever, we need to come alongside. We need to lift our brothers. We need to lift our sisters up during this time because many are struggling at this moment. They are struggling. So as we as a body, you know, I'm the pastor, yes, but I can't do this alone. This is a team, amen. And as a team, when our brothers or sisters, like I always been saying, if you think of someone, if someone comes to mind, that is God telling you, you need to call out to that person to see how they are doing. Now, I can try as much as I want, but I am only one person, amen. I cannot do it all. So as a family of Christ, Let's do this together because we are in this together. So reach out to your fellow brothers and your sisters. You may not have talked to a person in months. Why not? Why then? Now more than ever, reach out to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And again, we're going to be looking in Luke 19, verses 28 and 39. Trust that if you have your home, you have your Bibles with you. Maybe you have your tablets. Or you can be hearing the message from what I'm going to be reading. Now we're reading out the New American Standard. And the title of the message this morning is The Red Carpet Arrival. And if you ever watched the Star Study events back in the day, I used to watch all the movie stars. I wanted to know what was going on. And every time there was a movie premiere or a time of Oscars or Grammy, I would be the one that wanted to watch as to what are the stars going to wear. And back, you know, and they would, the fans would be cheering, they would be asking for selfies. And the paparazzi would be taking pictures like crazy. And the stars would make that grand appearance as they strutted their stuff down the red carpet. Of course, before they got to that red carpet experience, there was lots of preparation that had to take place. They just didn't decide to show up. They didn't decide one day to show up like, I'm going to be on the red carpet today. No, there was a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears that got them to that point. There was a lot of preparation that happened. And so when we look at the story of Jesus, that Jesus' debut didn't have a flashing light to the paparazzi. His, this was prophesied back in Zechariah 9 and 9, that here was his moment when we're talking about Jesus' triumphal entry. But this morning, his red carpet entry, that his, his red carpet experience would lead to a blood shared, a shed experience. We call it Passion Week because it was the passion of Christ. It was the love for us that led him to down this road. It was his agape love. So we're going to read in the scripture, and I hope at this time that you have in Luke 19, verse number 28. And it says, after he had said these things, he was going on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And when he approached Bethpage and Bethany, near the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you. There, as you enter, you will find a coat tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you why you're untying it, you shall say, The Lord has need of it. So those who went were sent away found it just as he had told them. Told them. As they were tying, untying the coat, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the coat? And they said, the Lord has need of it. Again, they said, the Lord has need of it. They brought it to Jesus, and they threw their coats on the coat and put Jesus on it. And, he, and as he was going, they were spreading their coats on the road. And as soon as he was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice, for all the miracles which they had seen. In verse number 38, shouting, 
Blessed is he, blessed is the king, who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace and earth and glory to the highest. Lord, we thank you for your word, God. We know your word is blessed. So, Lord, as we get ready to look into your word, God, I pray that you will just prepare our hearts, that you will have us open to receive what thus saith the Lord God. God, we thank you for this passion week. We thank you that you made the ultimate sacrifice, God, that even while we didn't even deserve it, that you went to that cross for us. And, Lord, we say thank you for what you're going to do. Prepare our minds and our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, we're talking about his red carpet entry. And we look at how the stars do their red carpet. And we just discuss how they get all this time preparing that they just don't show up to the red carpet just any old kind of way. There's, before they get to that moment, they have to do all these different things just to look right for their big appearance. And here it was that Jesus comes onto the scene really making his, I call it his red carpet debut. And I look at this scripture that if I've grown up in the church, and I've heard it so many times, but the word of God never gets stale. It never gets dull because every time you open his word, there is life in his word. So you take the time to read his word. We take the time to look at the word and say, God, what is it that you want me to get out of this word? And God is wanting people to know about pains coming back soon. And we've been saying it for years and years to come. And yes, he is coming back. Yes, we will stand upon his word. Yes, we will do as he commands, that we are going to fall and we are not going to faint. That right now the struggle is not as maybe going on, but the struggle only lasts so long. And we look to our heavenly father. We look to the word as our guidepost, as our source, as our point of direction. Say, God, what is it that you have for us this season? And it says in verse 29, Jesus sent two disciples. Now see, Jesus' instructions sometimes, they didn't always make sense. Now have you ever think about it? Have you ever had God tell you something? You're just like, you want me to do what? And when the disciples were looking at this, they were like, they, they didn't respond in a negative way. They did what Jesus told him to do. But he sent two disciples out to go do this task. The thing is, when Jesus sends you, he will provide for you. And he will give you, he gave clear directions to the disciples he had sent. And I said sometimes that the, sometimes what Jesus tells you, it does not make any sense whatsoever. And you may be thinking like, okay, Lord, what is this that you want me to do? And we know the thing is that Jesus will equip the ones who he sends. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for that. That once you listen to this church, that Jesus sent to disciples. He didn't send them willy-nilly, but he gave them instructions as to what they were supposed to do. And in the natural, it did not make any sense. But there was a purpose that he told them to do this task. There was a purpose in this because it all played a part in his red carpet arrival. Again, somebody needs to get this. Jesus will equip you if he sends you. And some of you out there may be listening, well, the Lord told me this, well, how is this, and all, what do we do, well, how is this going to happen, and when is it going to happen, and why, and who, what, God didn't want you to give all out, my parents would say, all that back talk, he wants you just to be obedient to what he says to, and he sent the disciples, and the disciples went without any questions. See, we got to get in that mentality that in order for things to happen in our life, in order for the ministry that God has placed us in, that we have to be obedient to the voice that he calls us to do. And it was. It says they sent. And we look at that. If you read in the Matthew's account, it refers to the donkey and the colt. And the thing is, there was not a limo delivering the Messiah. Oh, yes, stars have all sorts of kind of rides. They ride into Bentleys, Lamborghinis, everything, when they get to their red carpet experience. See, the Messiah didn't have that. He had a donkey and a colt. And it was the donkey that led the procession on this donkey and a colt that led this procession on his red carpet arrival. You see that 
Everything is playing a role. See, everyone is being tied together. Why? Because it's the family to give. The, it's the family of God coming together. And here was the family sending the two disciples. And yes, even the animals played a role in the Messiah's red concrete entry. And it says in verse 31, we just read about it. And the thing is that when God sends you, and when we start to worry, so we got your enemy to do this task. What and then Jesus? I love how Jesus, even before the disciples was asked, oh, "Well, you're sending us to go untie these animals. I mean, what are we to say?" Even before the disciples asked that very question, the Lord says, "If anyone asks you, you just tell him. Tell whoever it may be. The Lord has need of it. See, Jesus will give you the words to say." All he needs is a vessel to go be the conduit so that the word can go forth. And here it was, the disciples were the vessels. And all they had to do was open their mouth and say, well, this is what the Lord says. Here it is. Yes, the disciples had Jesus in living color. Jesus lives in our hearts. And if we are obedient, we will hear his voice. We will know his voice. And he is still giving instruction to his people today. And he's just saying, if you just open your mouth and just do what I said to tell you to do, he's going to make the path straight for you. All oh, again, yeah. all of this played a role in this red copper experience. See, his word will go before you. His word that he put in your spirit will go before you. So that you will have an answer to give when they start to question you. And oh yes, they will question you. They will question you from every angle that you may take. But God is just there. Open your mouth and say, thus saith the Lord. He will word your mouth. He will pin your hands with what to write. He will go before you. He will go behind you. He will surround you because he is there. Because he has sent you. And these disciples were sent. They were all playing a role. They played a piece. But they were not the main event. Because the main event was getting ready to come. He was going to have his grander experience. That no world would have, no one could imagine as to what could happen in this red carpet experience. Again, and it's told him what to say. The Lord has need. The Lord has need of this. And we look, he's just looking for vessels that are obedient and willing to follow his directions. And so the disciples go on. They find the car and the donkey just how the Lord has said it would be. Let me tell you something. If God gives you a word, that thing is going to come to pass. It may You may not see it at this very moment. But if the word of God came forth, that thing shall come to pass. And some of you may have been struggling saying, Lord, when? And the Lord is saying, not now, because it's preparation time. You see, all that this happened led up to where we are in this time. There was preparation for Jesus. Things were foretold in the Old Testament. And now this was getting ready to come to pass. See, when God speaks the word, he will bring that thing to forth. And you see how many years have passed from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And you're complaining out there about something that has not been come to pass. And it's only been a month. But God is doing something. There is preparation going on. He said, not right now. You just continue to stay in my word. You continue to be reforming. You continue to do what I say. You speak what I speak. And know that I will give you the words to say. Here it was. That word. Someone needs to hear that. That word that was spoken on your life, it's going to come to pass. You hang on to that word. God will bring that very thing to pass. And here it was. It was being fulfilled. Lately. The Lord said, you're going to find it this way. And not only, and it was exactly what the Lord had said. And they all they had to do, and it says, they had to untie it. He said, untie it and bring it back to them. So they went and found it just as he told them. Glory be to God. And as they were untying the coat, the thing is they had to untie it because the coat and the donkey, they were bound to something. Some of you need to get that. They were bound to something. Some of us need to unloose the ties of this world. 
You need to untie what's been holding you to the world. And you have to loose that thing. Just like those that coat and that donkey were probably tied to a post so they didn't go away. Some of us have been tied to things and God said, I need you to loose that. Because if you don't untie it and loose it, it's not you're going to be staying in that same position. Tied to a post. And God says, I want you to unloose to untie. And so they had to untie what is bound, what has been bound up. In church, you got to untie and God's been speaking to you and speaking to you and you're wondering why you're not going anywhere, why you're not moving and you feel like you're stuck and God has been speaking that word to you. Untie. Loose what has you bound. Loose yourself from the cares of the world. Untie yourself from the affairs of this carnal world and loose so that you can be by him. Here it was. Those animals were useless unless they became untied. They were useless. And here it was. They had a divine purpose in the story. These animals had a divine purpose. And it took two disciples on the outside to untie them to get those animals into the purpose that God had intended for them. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to help somebody get untied. Sometimes God will send you to somebody and say, God is trying to bring you to another place. God is wanting to take you to this different place in him. But you have yourself so tightly wound up in that thing he said you need to loose. And that's when you would come alongside someone and say, you know what? I'm going to help you out. And it was because of their, the disciples' willingness to be obedient to untie those things so that they can see their purpose in this great, great entry. See, Jesus will provide the resources when he does, when you need to do something. See, all, in our natural lives, we're always thinking, well, well, God, I don't have enough money. God, I don't have this and I don't have this. If he called you, he will equip you. He's going to provide you the resources that you need. And the thing is, in verse 33, once again, when the owners ask, what are you doing with my animals? Can you imagine someone coming to your eyes and you have animals and your animals maybe are tied up. And all of a sudden, you're, you start untying them. The owners are like, excuse me, excuse me, um, what are you doing? Uh, last time I checked, these were mine. And the thing is, they already had an answer to give because the Lord had already dropped it in their hearts and saying, you go and tell them, if anyone asks you, why are you doing this? You tell them, the Lord has need. See, here it was. Open your mouth. Speak that word of God. See, it was the word that carried him, that carried these disciples. And right now in this season of what we are experiencing, it's the word of God that's carrying us forth. It's the word of God that's going to get us through each and every day in our places where we're locked in our homes. But it's God's words that's within us that we shall speak forth. The word of God has to go forth. See, that word carried them. They were distributors of the word that the Lord gave them. See, they received the word, and what did they do? They delivered the word of God. See, it's how we're supposed to be doing these things. The word is given to us. It gets in our hearts. And when someone asks us, see, they ask, what are you doing with our animals? And they said, the Lord has need of it. When someone comes to you, what are you doing? To tell them, thus said the Lord, this is what the Lord is going to do. Let me tell you, because the word has been put forth in me. I received that word. I'm going to give back that word to someone else that needs it. Here it was. All of these, I call them the key players in the red carpet entry. And here it is mounting up to what comes out, to what is our main event, and that is Jesus. You see, in the celebrity world, there's all these A-list celebrities. They're the ones who get top billing. They're the ones who the directors will go after and do whatever they need to. See, Jesus was in the league of his own. And from and in from the disciples to the cult and the donkey, they all played a role in preparation. 
And they said in verse 35, they brought it to Jesus because it all goes back to him. You see all these key players, but what happens, it all goes back to the one. He is the alpha, he is the omega. And here it was that these little players were playing a role. They were vessels to be used, but when it all came said and done, it all went back to Jesus. He was the one. He was the one. And it says that, we know that this coat, it said it was these coats were never sat on. Now, I don't know much about animals, and I know I hear about horses, they have to be broken in before you get on them. They have to be trained. But notice that colt submitted to the authority of Jesus. When Jesus sat on it, that thing didn't run on, it didn't bump, it didn't shove, but it submitted to his authority. And my goodness, that got in my spirit that if we don't submit to his authority, we will buck and shove all the way. But immediately, that animal came subject to his authority. In church, you have to be subject to his authority. We can't be driving in our own way say, oh God, you over here, you go on this thing. No, he has to be, you have to be submitted to his authority. And immediately, that animal knew what was being placed upon him because it knew that that was the Lord. And it immediately did his subject to his authority. You can't expect Christ to lead you in the right direction if you don't submit. See, we don't want to do that. We want to do things on our own terms. We want to tell God, I want you to do this, and I want you to do that, and you got about five more minutes to get it done. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It's about his authority, submitting to his authority. And the donkey, I read, it represented peace. Hallelujah. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, riding on a piece of an animal that was considered peace. Here it was. He was making his red carpet arrival. And on when he was doing this, it was saying that I am Lord, I am Savior. And the crowds began to shout, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were shouting praises. He was making his grand debut. Can you imagine the cloaks that were being spread as he came down? Can you imagine the branches that they tore down? Branches, what it was, they were tearing down the branches so that he can walk, though the animal walk over. And it was letting him know that I am Lord, I am Savior. And the people, they shouted. And here it was, I call these, because many of these people were just fans. And one thing about fans, they can be kind of fickle. And the thing is, I call them, they were these little fickle little fans, because days later, the same people that shouted, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, will be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. See, the thing is, there's a difference between a fan and a true follower of Christ. If you are a true follower, you're going to follow him through thick and thin. You're going to follow him when things are going well, when your job is there. You're going to follow him when you're laid off and you're wondering, how in the world are my bills going to get paid? Because when you are a true follower of Christ, that he is going to carry you through. And here is our Lord and Savior made his grand debut. And the people shouted. They shouted for him. And it was his time to solidify who he was. Oh, yes. Many of these people that were shouting, they seen the miracles that he performed. And a lot of them were dazzled by those miracles. But here it was. The red carpet arrival. Here was this arrival was welcomed by many. This was no ordinary arrival. This was something that was prophesied years and years before. See, his and it kind of look at this entry. His birth was meager. It was just something that was not grand or it was not this grand thing. We know how Jesus was born, born in that manger, stinky manger. And here it was. Now he's having his other debut. It was a time to let the world know, here's our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. And here it was, he was coming in. You see, this red carpet arrival would lead down to what would be a bloody red experience. As we know that we're going to celebrate resurrection next week, but this was what catapulted all the start of Holy Week. So we lift our hands, because we may not have palms right now, but we have our hands to pray, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And this is where it is all about. It is about Jesus. 
making that entry into Jerusalem. And so because of all that he did, we have the right to call him Savior. We have the right to call him King. And all we have to do is at first accept him. And we may not understand everything. Maybe you're just tuning in saying, I don't understand this Jesus. I don't get what you're talking about. But as I get ready to close, I want to offer you Jesus. You see, Jesus made this triumphal entry into Jerusalem to establish himself as Savior and King. Today, you can accept him into your heart and say, Lord, I want you to be my Savior. I want you to be the King of my life. And as he does, as you do that, you're going to see that he will send you, he will call you, he will equip you. So I'm going to just do a quick prayer offering an invitation to those who may not know Jesus. And I guarantee when you do, God's going to start to download your spirit. And as you read the word of God, he's going to give you a greater understanding about what he wants for your life. See, all of this, we think about passion, we think about what our Lord and Savior had to endure. But when he looked at it, when Jesus looked back at it, we were worth it. We were worth it. And you may be thinking right now, I don't deserve his love. Maybe you took the Lord's name in vain. Maybe you just did so many things that, am I, is there, is there, is there still hope for me? Yes, there's still hope for you. So I'm going to pray. And if you say this prayer, just rejoice. Let us know. Dear Jesus, we just thank you. And for who's listening, just repeat after me if you're out there saying this. And say it with sincerity of your heart. Dear Jesus, I acknowledge myself as a sinner, Lord. I ask that you would just wash myself clean. I believe that you are the Son of Man. And Lord, I confess that you are my risen Savior. And Lord, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for the ultimate sacrifice. We thank you that you came to this world as a babe. We thank you, Lord God, that though we know your bloodshed was shed for us, that that red carpet experience is going to lead to a bloody cross. And so we say, Lord, thank you for saving us, that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And he is that sacrificial lamb. And if you said that prayer for the first time, let us know. We want to rejoice with you. Angels in heaven are rejoicing for what you did today. You made a great step. And God is going to propel you forward to great mighty things. And all this week, this is Passion Week. Study it. Get into his word. God so richly loves you. He loves you so very much. His entry was talked about many years. It's come to pass. I'm going to say a closing prayer. Pastor Wayne is going to lead us out in one final song of worship. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this week. God, we thank you for the passion that you have for your children, Lord God. That even while we were yet sinners, that you died for us. Lord, we thank you for your red carpet entry, Lord God, that said that you were Savior and that you are King. And Lord God, we say thank you, Lord God, for that. Lord, we rejoice in your sacrifice. We rejoice in your entry. We rejoice and we say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Be with us as we go. Lord God, as we go about our day, Lord God, I pray that you will ignite a fire in people like never before. And Lord God, that we will reach out to those who are lost that don't know about this great entry, Lord God. That this entry, so that people can know that they can have entry, that you can be the entry to their heart. Lord, let them receive. Let them open their hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Wayne, can you lead us in worship? Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, holy is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I run, the ransom for my life, holy is my song. You are a good, a good. Oh, yes, ma'am.